Bobby. Get him. You are listening to Brave Talk Radio. You're just in time to join today's brave conversations with your hosts, Jackie Little Guest, Daryl Williams, and Tony Emma Hale. All right, it's a Brave Talk Day, and guess who's in the house today? The one and only Daryl Williams. Daryl, welcome back to your own radio broadcast. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, it's good to be back. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm excited about uh, the opportunity to speak uh, on serious topics and issues, and uh, had to take care of a little business, but uh, we're, we're back. Well, good. I, I know it's been, what, three weeks now, close to a month since we've had mm-hmm. you actually share your points and nuggets of wisdom with us. So today, I'm just going to dedicate this to you and just let you take it away. Okay. Well, I understand that you guys have been having a very uh, good discussion, a continuing discussion about relationships, and I had heard that you guys were dealing with this notion of being single, saved, and satisfied. And that is to say, uh, when we say satisfied, what we mean is that we don't have any inclination whatsoever uh, towards either being married or building a family. And uh, when I heard that, I kind of chuckled because I know where a lot of that comes from. We have to remember that in American society, most of our perspectives and our ideas and our behavior is socially engineered. And because of uh, just the disastrous nature of things in the black community where you have so many men being incarcerated and the black male image has been eviscerated since the time of slavery, a lot of the sisters are kind of feeling, some of them are feeling desperate, I, I know because I've talked to a few, and others are feeling uh, kind of hopeless with regard to either coupling with uh, a black man or, or uh, getting either engaged or involved in a serious relationship, then engaged and or married after that. What I would say to that is a lot of that I would call socially engineered compensatory logic, okay? And, um, and it could be categorized as a psychological defense mechanism because, and it's almost, it's, it's it, in, in a, it's also an oxymoron because we're saying that we're saved. <laughs> Let me say it the correct way. We're single, saved, and, and satisfied. Well, let's deal with saved. If you're saved, that means that you're a Christian or you espouse some religion that relates to Christianity, and the Bible is, is your whole premise for how you think and function. Well, the Bible, it makes it very clear that I believe in the book of Genesis when it says that it's not good for a man and a woman to be alone. It says also in that same chapter uh, of the Bible to be fruitful and multiply. And the only way you're going to be fruitful and multiply is if you couple with somebody, marry them, and build a family. But we're here today talking about being single, saved, and satisfied with no desire for marriage, no desire for family, no desire for children, and no desire really to help build a community. So we're now (laughs) anti-marriage, you know, and satisfied, anti-marriage, anti-family, anti-procreation, and ultimately if we're uh, anti-procreation, anti-family, and the family being the institution that was first institutionalized, I mean the first institution on the planet after, uh, in in I believe, the third chapter of Genesis where uh, God says it's not good for man to be alone. It says that he caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. He went into Adam and took out a rib and prepared for him a woman. And when he had awoken from his sleep, he brought the woman to him. Uh, it also goes on to say that uh, then shall a man leave his mother and his father and cleave unto his spouse or wife or husband, and they become one flesh. It says that in the very first book of the Bible. Okay, the very first book. Now, if we say and we say we believe in, in God and we're Christian, and the very first book tells us it's not good for us to be alone. It tells us to be fruitful and, and multiply. Well, where do we get say, single? Because we've had many television shows, and I'm going somewhere. Uh, Living Single uh, shows was a very popular show in, in the 90s. Most recently, The New Normal, where what's being advocated is these gay and lesbian or LGBT insanity-based uh, families, where you have two men uh, raising little boys and little girls, or two women 
uh, raising little girls and creating all kinds of uh, perversion and, and or sexual confusion. Okay, where did all this stuff come from? Well, obviously, we have to deal with causation uh, because when we have a mindset, something has caused that mindset. It didn't just appear out of nowhere. Where did this stuff come from? And, and why am I making this point? Back in the 70s when I was a child and the 60s and the 50s, and let's go back to the 40s. We can go all the way back to slavery when they wouldn't even allow us to have families. Our main desire at that time was to, uh, to, to mate, meet, uh, uh, mate, couple, marry, and have, and produce children and have families and build communities. We did that all through the 1800s all through the 1900s, where and when we could, because let's go back, during slavery, there were some what they called free slaves. Now, that's an oxymoron, but you, you did have African-descended people in America that were free, and the basis for their life, the sine qua non, if you would, of their life was their family. Without their family and without a significant other, you had nothing. <laughs> Okay, so let's, let's come on down to the 1920s when you had Black Wall Street, which is Greenwood, uh, Oklahoma, Tulsa, Oklahoma, the town called Greenwood. You had Rosewood down in Florida. You had communities that were thriving communities in Philadelphia, in Chicago, where uh, the founder of Chicago was John Baptiste DuSable, a black guy from Haiti. Most people don't talk about that when they talk about Chicago that was founded by an African. You had Wilmington, North Carolina. I just went to uh, an expose where they showed how Wilmington was a thriving black-dominated uh, city where black people uh, owned their own businesses and controlled their own destinies and, and were involved in all areas of industry and, and, and commerce. And it thrived until it was destroyed. And there's that, that familiar pattern, too, and I don't want to get off on that. But the family was all we had, and the family was the basis for all of that. Okay, so now today, we're talking about being single, saved, and satisfied, and not even, not, no marriage, no family, no children. Let me just say this before I go forward. I'm single, I'm tremendously spiritual, and I'm satisfied, but oh, don't get it twisted. The first woman that I meet that qualifies, that will have me, and will allow me to be her king, and she my queen, and we become equal partners, oh, it's on. I'm, I'm not anti-family. I'm not anti, and let me make this perfectly clear, too. The only woman for me is a dark-skinned black woman. I, you know, I know y'all get down with all this interracial stuff now. Hey, if that's your boat, if that's the boat you're willing to sail on, have that. Hey, only thing I want in my life is someone that looks like it reminds me of my mom. That's the woman I came out of, and that's the one I want to go back into. Hello, somebody. Turn to your neighbor and say, <laughs> turn to your neighbor and say, if it ain't the black woman, I ain't interested. Okay, let's Girl, go for it. he's back. Say, let me, let, me, let me make sure I'm saying it correctly now, because this is what y'all were saying. Single, saved, and satisfied. Let's deal with tell lies, Bishop. In America, that's so Wait a minute, Daryl. Let, let, yeah. let me just say one thing. And I, I, I do want to hit this because I think the, the concept of satisfied comes from the book of Ephesians, um, you know, with being content in all things. But the, the problem that I have with women, particularly our African-American black women, when we look at these statistics about 70% either remaining or existing now being unmarried or just plain single, um, when we keep hearing that and when you feed that into your mind, you can feed that into your mind to the point where you think that it is normal to be alone, and it is not. It, it is mm -hmm. not. The element of contentment has been literally taken out of context. Mm -hmm. And now it becomes a barricade in the mind that keeps mm -hmm. you separated from your destiny in which God mm -hmm. has destined you woman, you black woman, to be mm -hmm. with man. And so mm -hmm. that's the challenge that we're unearthing here is because these women in their mind, now that's planted, and it has taken their mind to another level of being anti-marriage. Well, I don't need no man in my life. Again, one of the most stupidest comments I've ever heard come out of a woman's mouth. I don't, 
I don't particularly hear that coming out of a women's mouth who are of other cultures as much as I do black women. And the cards, according to the statistics, are already stacked up against you, and it's nobody's fault but your own because of the mindset that you're wielding, the mindset that you're operating out under. So you run it around here single, save, and satisfied. You uh, are anti-marriage, don't need no man, but yet you run it around here with three kids or four kids behind you, but you still don't have a man. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what you call it. We talked about this before, and I, I categorize it as maximum sophisticated confusion coupled with menticide. But let me, you said something important. I don't want to get off on that just yet because I could. Um, the Bible says <laughs> very important what you just brought up, and that's where I was going. What's causing this? The Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. That's and that, you know, as a woman thinks, so is she. So if you think in anti-marriage, anti-family, and anti-procreation, even though you got three kids out of wedlock and all of that, you're really anti-God. But let me go, let me, I can, ooh, I, I almost went there. But, but <laughs> as a man thinketh, as, I, as, a man, as a man thinketh, or a woman thinketh, so is he or she. We started off this year on one of the other shows saying that he who controls thinking controls behavior. And I specifically said on one of the other shows, he who controls the printed page controls the thinking of the age. So what controls our thinking in, uh, other than our religiosity in this country? What controls our thinking? The media. And one of the very first things I did this on purpose, I, I'm very meticulous, and uh, I'm a chess player. I play chess. I don't play checkers. Okay, so I'm a long-range right. thinker and a long-range player. So when I say something, uh, and I learned that you say it, and when you say something to people through any medium, as Dr. Stevens says, you have to say it at least seven times before people connect with it. That, That's right. On one of the earliest broadcasts we did, I think the very first one, I talked about what y'all call TV. And I call it tell lies vision. Y'all call it television. I call it tell lies vision. All right? It's called TV programming. Let's deal with that. Now, in ancient Africa, we read and wrote from right to left. Today, in Eurocentric societies, we are forced to write from left to right. But because you are black and African, if you go back to your ancient way and flip it, when you say something, it makes more sense. So it's called television programming. Let's read that from right to left. Programming, vision, teller. Okay, programming, meaning mental programming, uh, vision, meaning your sight, meaning what you see is what you become and what you think and ultimately how you behave, and teller means to transport. Roughly translated, that means mind control. There we go. Right. And let's look at that. Let's look at that in the Afri- from the African, from the black, from the ancient black way of looking at things. I just said mind control. Let's flip that. Control mind. <laughs> Y'all ain't ready for me. Y'all ain't ready for me. But on one of the very first shows, I gave out two patent numbers, U.S. patent number uh, for behavior modification in this country. I'm going somewhere. I've got to connect some dots, and then we're going to get off, if that's okay. Uh, first, okay. U.S. Uh, uh, mind control patent, because that's what television and computer monitors are, <laughs> I gave was U.S. patent number 6506-148, uh, and that was from 2003. That was 13 years ago. Then there was an earlier one, U.S. patent number 3951-34A from 1976. I happen to have the one from 2003 sitting here because I'm in my war room. I'm only going to read the last part of it, <laughs> and then I'm going to go somewhere else. The last part of it says certain monitors can emit, listen to this, electromagnetic field pulses that excite sensory resonance in a nearby subject through image pulses that are so weak as to be subliminal. <laughs> so subliminal mind control is what it's talking about. It's not. It says, this is unfortunate since it opens a way for mischievous a- application of the invention. Mischievous, mischievous, let me say it that way, application of the ad- invention whereby people are exposed unknowingly to manipulation of their nervous systems, their minds. Okay, for someone else's purposes. <laughs> Let's move. Now, back from 2003. Let me go here to another document. I'm going to help some of you women out to save 
and crazy. And say single and satisfied and crazy, talking all this, I don't, I don't want to be married stuff and all of that. I can prove everything I say. This is taken from a document called The Protocols of the Learned Elders of the Night. This goes back 20 centuries ago. It tells you in the document where it came from, what its purpose was. And under a chapter uh, entitled, We Deceive Workers, because the whole thing is based on deception. Okay, you've been deceived. Anybody out there talking about I'm saved, single, and satisfied, and I don't want no family, and I don't and all this craziness, you've been deceived. Okay, it says, in order to distract people, who may be troublesome from discussions of questions of the political, we are now putting forth what we believe to be questions of the political, namely questions of industry. In this sphere, let them discuss themselves silly. The masses are agreed to remain inactive. This is 20 centuries ago. Sounds like today. It says to uh, take a rest from what they supposed to be political, which we train them to in order to use them as a means of combating governments. <laughs> only on condition of being found new employment in which we are prescribing them something that looks like the same political object in order that the masses themselves may not guess what they are about. We further distract them with amusements, games, pastimes, passions, people's palaces. Uh, and I'm going, uh, I'm going to use some euphemism for what they just said. Uh, Housewives of Atlanta, I can do bad all by myself. Tyler Seri movie, yep. um, and all that kind of foolishness. It says, now, why did, I get go, why did I get married? Why did I get married to? All this uh, reverse psychological programming is by design, okay? But the document says, soon we shall begin through the press. The press back then was, uh, was the printed press. Today the press is the press and TV um, to propose competitions in art and sport of all cats. Now, no, we didn't have basketball, football, baseball, a lot of stuff we have today 20 centuries ago. It says they didn't have the Roman gladiatorial period where that was just insanity. But let me keep reading. These interests will finally distract their minds from questions in which we should find ourselves compelled to oppose them, growing more and more unaccustomed to reflect on any form of opinions of their own. People will begin to talk in the same tone as we, because we alone shall be offering them new directions of thought. New directions of thought. Let me read one more thing, Tony, and I'm done. This is taken from the Tavistock Institute. Most people don't know what the Tavistock Institute is and what it does. The Tavistock Institute is responsible for all social engineering throughout the world. And they use reverse psychology Media, propaganda, lies, and distortions. Um, the part of the document that I'm reading comes from page number four, uh, the second paragraph. I can read the whole document. It'll make it perfectly clear, but I only need to read this, and I think everybody would be happy. It says, the methods of Freudian psychotherapy induce permanent mental illness in those who undergo this treatment by destabilizing their character. The treatment they're talking about is the propaganda that they feed people. It says, the victim is then advised to, quote, establish new rituals, saved, single, satisfied, not desired, marriage or family. That's a new ritual, all right, of personal interaction. That is to indulge in, a, in brief sexual encounters, which actually set the participants adrift with no stable personal relationships in their lives, destroying their ability to establish and maintain a family. When Darren Williams says that, the methods of Freudian psychotherapy that they use through the media, through these TV shows, Scandal, Empire, these movies, I can do bad all myself, all by myself. Why did I get married? I hate men shows and I hate women shows. And in the, in the music, these hip-hop stars calling women all kind of degrading, derogatory names and women jumping around in front of the camera with the camera all up in there. You know what? Uh, it, this, is, this, is all, this is all media propaganda by design. Okay, it says the methods of Freudian psychotherapy induce permanent mental illness. Y'all crazy. That's what I mean when I say y'all crazy. <laughs> I know y'all crazy. It says in those who undergo this treatment by destabilizing their character. You said you say. You said you believe in the word of God. Word of God says not good uh, for, for men and women to be alone. It says these people are multiplied. So where do you get this saved, single, and satisfied with no marriage stuff from? That ain't what God says. But this kind of stuff that you subject yourself to, uh, 
unknowingly, I just read this, is subliminal, is the stabilizing your character. How about that? It says the victim has been advised to establish new rituals of personal interaction, that is to indulge in brief sexual encounters, which actually set the participants adrift with no stable, permanent relationships in their lives, destroying their ability to establish and maintain a family. It goes on to say Tavistock Institute. You need to look it up and find out what's going on. Find out why you, why you wear the clothes you wear. Find out why you got uh, nose piercings and ear piercings and all this crap all, and tattoos all over your body. Find out who, who's manipulating this stuff. It says the Tavistock Institute has developed such power in the U.S. that no one achieves prominence in any field unless he has been trained in behavioral science at Tavistock or one of its subsidiaries. Socially engineered chaos. <laughs> when you start talking this foolishness about I'm single, I'm saved, and I'm satisfied, first of all, oh, that's a, to me an oxymoron. <laughs> okay, you'll be satisfied, and that means happy and complete. But when you say you're satisfied, and I don't need no man, I don't need no woman, uh, I don't, and what you're saying is you don't care about relationships. You don't care about family. You don't care if it's me. And we live in the me, 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 the I, 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 I world now. There's yeah. no us. So we just me, 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 I, 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 and, you know, the, to hell with everybody else. I, I have to say it that way because that's how a lot of people think and that's how they behave. Mm-hmm. Brave Talk Radio. I'm there with you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, that, I mean, that, that is all, I mean, it is all so relevant and it really breaks down the danger of developing that kind of mindset. And, you know, when I see this, this type of thing pushed through singles ministries and churches, and then some of the young women and, and parachurch ministers and, and Christian leaders who, again, proclaim to be followers and believers of Christ, but they're pushing these oxymoronic taglines and, and methods and standards of life that are totally contrary to the word of God. So as we close out, remember, new directions of thought. That's nothing more than a targeted plan of the enemy to get you off course and to implement his plan into keeping you and separating you from your destiny and living the Christ life that God intended. The next thing, destabilizing your character. Okay, Daryl just gave it to you. It is a methodical process. It is targeted. It is planned. Nothing is happening by chance with regard to reshaping the patterns of your thinking with regard to your inability to accept the fact that you were created to be communal. You were created to be relational. It's a part of your destiny should you so choose to. And then the new rituals for your personal interaction. Running around here, anti-marriage, but will proudly wear that badge of being a single parent. Contrary to the word of God, it's not what God intended. It's Brave Talk Radio. Daryl Williams is back. Welcome back, (laughs) Daryl. Uh, thank you. I want to leave you with two quotes. It was Franklin Delano, Delano Roosevelt that says, in politics, really meaning in life, nothing happens by accident. If it happened, it was planned that way, is what he said back in the 1920s. Doctor, the late Dr. Amos Wilson said it this way, for any of this stuff to work, for any of this insanity, such as being saved, single, satisfied, anti-marriage, anti-family, anti-community, for any of that to work, he says black people would have to first be insane or crazy. Some of y'all crazy. This is Daryl Williams, Great Talk Radio. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> you are listening to Brave Talk Radio at TonyEmmahale.com. Hi, this is Tony Emmahale, and today I'd like to share pie with you. As you continue on this journey called life, I want you to remember these three words, presence, influence, and experience. Know that your presence will always make the difference. Nobody, and I mean nobody, can add to the atmosphere the unique qualities that you do. God has given you a very distinctive power of influence to wield in any way in which you choose. The only caveat, though, 
is that you wield it in such a way that it brings him glory. In return, you reap the inheritance of eternal blessings that he has set aside just for you. Now, believe it or not, it's your life experiences that will guide you and prepare you for what you are coming into. In fact, experience is the primary producer of faith in the life of a believer. So build your faith today as you remember the importance of Pi, presence, influence, and experience. This has been a Teachable Moment with Tony Emma Hill. Today's broadcast has been brought to you by Next Level Plus Project Management and Business Consultants. Learn more about how Next Level Plus can help you solve the right problems and seize the right opportunities by calling 704-780-2997 or visit their website at nextlevelplus.org. You are listening to Brave Talk Radio at TonyEmmaHale.com.